the prairie. A thousand miles of it, empty, rich, waiting, silent, the way it is today, as the wagons roll west. But not too long ago, the prairie was alive. Fifteen million buffalo moved over the face of the land. And men moved after them. To the Plains Indian, buffalo was life itself. Food, drink, shelter, clothing, fuel. As long as the herds live, the Indians live. A buffalo is 2,000 pounds of danger, a ton of power on four hooves. Horns strong enough to pick up a horse and rider and carry them in the air for a hundred yards. Hunter and buffalo. Buffalo and hunter. Friend and enemy. To the Indian, the buffalo was only life. But to the buffalo hunter, to the manufacturers of bone meal fertilizers and buffalo robes, the buffalo was money. The buffalo retreated west farther and farther. But then the wagons came, and the creaking of their wheels became a dirge for the buffalo, for the Indian, for the open plain. Well, I wish you boys a lot of luck. From all the buffalo sign I've seen lately, I wouldn't bet on it. Well, it was pretty good through here last year, Chris. They will run across some. Well, there have been a lot of trains and hide hunters through here since then. I saw a few signs about 10 miles north of us yesterday. I imagine we'll find a couple. Hey, come on, come on. Them buffalo ain't gonna wait all day, you know. Let's go. Hey. You gonna shoot them or scare them to death? I'm gonna get me a buffalo. They'll be stewing the buffalo pot tonight. Charlie, they take one look at that outfit you're wearing, and every buffalo this side of Canada will head for Mexico. <laughs> you better stay in camp, Charlie. Doggone it, Mr. Hale. I was hunting buffalo when them two young whippersnappers was hunting their milk bottles. Yeah, well, maybe that's why they're so scarce these days. Listen, I can turn up Buffalo in downtown Chicago. Well, we're not looking in downtown Chicago. This happens to be Kansas. Chris, see you about sundown. Bring you back something fit to eat for a change. <laughs> Come on, Duke. Two men are better than three anyway, Charlie. The way the game's been so spooky lately. Maybe you can go next time, eh? Doggone, we'll see who's a Buffalo hunter around here. <laughs> No wonder you don't see no buffalo no more. Every place you look, all you see is wagon tracks, wagon tracks. I bet there's been more buffalo stampooled by wagons than ever been killed by Indians. You know that, don't you? Oh. Buck! Buck! Now there's a buffalo track, and a fresh one, too. The old man knows buffalo. Know that when I see him. You wait right here, Buck. I don't want you to get in the way. Of course, if you hear a shot, mosey on over. <laughs> yeah, they're fresh. a rule about not shooting no sitting buffaloes, especially one that's already been shot. You know, I ain't never been this close to one of you big fellas before. Had a nice hump there. You know, I ain't had any buffalo humps too since, uh, well, since the last time, I guess. <laughs> Pretty eyes too, ain't she? Great big ones, just like mine. <laughs> no problem to that air. Pretty well hung up in that log there, too. You know what I'm going to do? 
I'm going to take that air out of you. Might hurt a little bit, but I think I'll try it. Now, wait a minute. This will hurt. This will hurt. Well, that didn't hurt, did it? Hey, about two weeks old, I'd say. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get that log loose from you. No, this won't hurt too much. Not as much as air. I'm going to give you five seconds to get out of here. One, two, three, four, five. Go on, go on. Get away from here. Listen, you. This here is a buffalo gun. Don't that mean nothing to you? Don't it? I'm going to get a little disgusted with you. I come out here to get me a buffalo, and I'm going to get one. All right. You won't move away from me. I'll move away from you. It's the same difference. Charlie? I don't know. You know what he's going to say, don't you? Oh, forget it. He's probably forgotten all about a buffalo hunt by now. All right. Where is it? I can't cook buffalo hump too without buffalo, you know. Where is it? Well, it was kind of a bad day for buffalo, Charlie. Matter of fact, we didn't get any. You didn't? I'll be willing to bet a month's pay that there isn't a buffalo within 50 miles from here. Yes, sir, I think this country's seen the last of the buffalo. Is that so? I don't want to sound boastful or anything, but I've been buffalo hunting enough to know when one's within 15 miles of me. I can sort of smell them. You don't say. You know what I mean, Bill. Kind of musty like. You can pick it up on the breeze. Yeah, buffalo's got a smell all of its own. You got a cold, Charlie? Oh, no, Mr. Chris. I kind of thought I'd smell buffalo. Do you smell any buffalo, Bill? No, I don't smell any buffalo, but I'd like to smell some salt pork and beans, if you don't mind. I like buffalo myself, and it's too bad you young fellas didn't get some, because Mr. Chris had his mind all set up on buffalo steak tonight. Didn't you, Mr. Chris? Well, I'll settle for beans, too, Charlie. Anytime you're ready. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. I don't like it, Chris. He's acting too sneaky. You know what he's going to do? He's going to give us a big, fat hunk of salt grease and tell us it's buffalo tongue. Well, you don't have to remind me of it. I just kind of thought you two young hunters ought to meet a friend of mine. I thought you were a little young to get into Buffalo, so I figured if we're going to get into Buffalo, I better go out and get it myself, just to make sure. Excuse me, he's got a little cold. Pardon me, Isn't that better? <laughs> Charlie, uh, where'd you find him? Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Hawk. I just used my old pioneer know-how. I just figured where I would be if I was a Buffalo, and there I was. Well, I mean, there he was. And you notice I brought him back alive, too. Anybody can bring him back dead. Almost anybody. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I'll be. It's not a cow with a rug on it. That's a real bull buffalo. Certainly it is. I wasn't hunting rabbits, you know. You know, Mr. Worcester, sometimes you amaze me. Sometimes I amaze myself. <laughs> you know, Charlie, I'm going to have to apologize to you. I didn't give you much credit this morning. I accept. And I accept for next time, too. You know, I thought that I was going to have to eat crow for a while, but uh, now it looks like we'll have those buffalo ribs after all. What are you talking about? You some kind of a cannibal or something? Well, what's wrong with you? I'd better carve a steak off you than touch Clyde here. Clyde? Clyde, certainly Clyde. Well, look at them big brown eyes, Mr. Hale. Look at that hole in his shoulder. What's the matter with you? Ain't you got no feelings or nothing? Charlie, you hunt buffalo for food. You said so yourself. I did. 
Well, I didn't mean Clyde. Well, he's a buffalo, isn't he? He ain't just a buffalo. He's my buffalo and my friend. Ain't you, Clyde? Well, Charlie, uh, maybe you wouldn't mind telling me what you have in mind for your friend, Clyde? Well, I figured he could, uh, we could, uh... Well, that's a kind of a silly question. Everybody knows what you do with buffalo. Well, sure, you eat them. How you quit talking like that? You know, Charlie, I always figured that you were about half monkey, and, uh, now I think the other half's buffalo. You're very funny, both of you. think you're funny, don't you? Hm. No, Charlie, but you'll have to admit your friend Clyde might give us a little trouble. Uh, how'd you get him? Well, I found him out there, Mr. Christie. He was kind of a jam. He had that arrow stuck in his shoulder and everything. A big, poor, dumb animal like that. You just couldn't shoot him. So I yanked out the arrow, and he wouldn't leave me alone. You know, Clyde likes me, and I like him, too. I'll just put some salve on that shoulder of his and get it well in no time. Well, why didn't you chase him away? Oh, I tried to, Mr. Christie. I shoot him and booed at him and everything else. He followed me around just like a little puppy dog. <laughs> you know, Mr. Chris, that animal is the best judge of character I've ever seen. <laughs> Charlie? Yes, sir? You planning on keeping him for a pet? You know the rules. Well, we're short of horses. I figured I could break him to carry a pack. Maybe break him to ride, too. Or cook, maybe? Pardon? Cook. Oh, no, Mr. Chris, we couldn't do that. <laughs> but look at them beautiful brown eyes. Did you ever see anything so pathetic in your whole life? Mr. Chris, he looked up at me with those big brown eyes, and just as if he'd used words, he said, Charlie, you saved my life. I love you. He said that? That's what he said. And any day that an animal can't come to Charles B. Wooster for help and get it, that is the day that Charles B. Wooster has turned his back on all his noble ideals. Well, Chris, there's one way to look at it. It's like having a half a ton of roast beef in the bank, when and if you need it. You lay a hand on him and you'll have to fight me. He'll be a great help to us, Mr. Chris, and he'll be a great comfort to me, too, when them two great buffalo hunters are out making fools of themselves again, too. Well, there's nothing in the rule books about anybody showing up with a pet buffalo. I suppose I could have made up some rules about it, but uh, never quite figured the situation would come up. All right, Charlie, you can keep him for a while. But don't you forget that that's a wild animal. And the first time he causes any trouble or we get any complaints, Clyde has to go. Thank you, Mr. Chris. Come on, Clyde, I'll show you where we're going to bump. Come on. Come on, boy. <laughs> Leads nice, doesn't he? Wait till I finish training him. Stand up. Come on, Clyde. Chris, I think we're asking for trouble. Yeah. I know quite a bit about buffaloes, and I've never heard of anybody training one. Well, I'm going to give Charlie his chance. I've never seen him quite this worked up about anything before. But you boys keep an eye on that beast. If he gives any trouble or starts to go wild, we can't afford to think of Charlie Worcester's feeling. Yeah. Trained buffalo, huh? It's getting dirty every year. How's the look up ahead, Mel? Well, it's real dry. Streams are low enough, so we won't have any trouble affording them. Saw some Arapaho sign. Not enough to worry about, though. I hear it's been a bad year for the Arapaho with the herds gone. What are you doing, cooking, Duke? Figured you'd be hungry. Besides, you can't find Charlie. Last time I saw him, he was out trying to put his saddle on Clyde. Yeah, he did it, too. I saw him just before dark, hanging on for dear life. Old fool's gonna get himself killed if he isn't careful. I doubt that. You've got to admit, he's more even-tempered these days. Training that buffalo keeps him out of trouble. Keeps him with the cook wagon, too. Ah! Ah! Here, wait a minute. Mr. Hawks, what's going on here? Mr. Sherman, we've told you about your boy before and that bow and arrow of his. This time he almost hurt somebody. Sonny, is that true? I was only playing. I thought I told you never to shoot at people, didn't I? I didn't. I was shooting at some potatoes. I thought you said he almost hurt somebody. The potatoes that he shot at were being peeled at the time. Now, well, Mr. Sherman, I know that boys will be boys. But if he keeps this up, he'll never be anything but a boy. Now, you listen to me. If I ever hear about you shooting at people again, or anywhere around people, you're going to stand up all the way to California. You hear that? Now, you get on that wagon, and you stay there. I'm sorry, Mr. Hawks. 
I guess I've been so busy tending these cattle that I ain't watched the boy like I should. Well, I don't blame you much for that. Good looking three heads you got there. And two prize cows and the best bull in the Midwest. Mr. Hawks, I figured to have the best herd on the West Coast in a few years. Although I have been worried a mite lately, them cows have been acting up some. Well, it takes a little while for livestock to get used to the trail. It'll be all right. Good night, Mr. Sherman. Yeah, good night. And right after I spent all afternoon slaving over a hot wash tub, I tell you, Mr. Hale, I could have broke right down and cried. Now, I want to know what you're going to do about it. If a woman can't even hang out her laundry, I don't... What happened? Ask Mr. Worcester. Ask me. It was an accident, that's all. Accidents happen, though. That monster did it on purpose. It tore down my whole week's wash. Who? Clyde. Clyde. That, that horrible wild beast. I just had him out for a little ride, that's all. Getting him used to the saddle. And this woman has to come out hanging up, flapping sheets up in front of us. I don't blame Clyde. I just damn poodled myself. That's enough, Charlie. Mrs. Seidel shouldn't have to worry about keeping her laundry out of a buffalo run. I should hope not. It wasn't enough that he dug my husband's best shirts in the mud. It ran off with my... My... Well, it was hanging on its head like a flag. Well, I know just how you must feel, Mrs. Seidel. But Mr. Worcester will be happy to redo your laundry for you. Me? And I'll see that he replaces anything the buffalo destroyed. Well, in that case, it... But if you ever find my... my... They're hanging on a tree right outside the camp. I'll get them. You will not. I'll go get it myself, and what's more, I'll wash it myself, too. Buffalo. <laughs> Well, Mr. Worcester? I don't care what she says, Mr. Chris. It wasn't Clyde's fault. Anybody hang them old dangling sheets up? Well, there ought to be a law. Charlie, what exactly was hanging on Clyde's neck? Well, it beats me, Bill, but it had lace all around the bottom. I'll tell you another thing. If you ever need a canvas or a wagon, you could use it and have enough left over for a tent, too. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and don't you worry about that Mrs. Seidel or nothing. You know, it wasn't your fault. I don't blame you at all. Anybody hangs their old clothes out where people run into them, ain't got no complaint. Clyde, you know what we're going to do? We're going to California, and we're going to go into show business. Charlie Wooster and Clyde, trick and fancy buffalo riding. We'll be a sensation. You know, Clyde, we'll make a million dollars. I'll buy a great big buffalo ranch for us. How's that sound? And I'll even get you a little buffalo missus. Maybe sooner or later I'll get one for myself. Of course, right now, I don't think that's very important, Clyde. I think the most important thing is to get on with our writing lessons. So when we do get to California, we'll be a sensation. Don't you think that's right? Don't you? Huh? You wait right here and I'll go get the saddle. Now, you wait here like a good boy. Stay right there. Here, Rosie. Uh, Maud, we're going to say hello to Toro. That's it. Some nice corn. Just, Maud. Rosie, look. Some nice... Toro likes you. I'll give you some nice corn if you'll just... Tarnation. I wish I knowed what in thunder is wrong with them two. All that money tied up in these two critters, and neither Maud nor Rosie will even say hello to Toro. You women are all alike. Well, don't blame me. Maybe Toro isn't using the right technique. But this is no laughing matter. No! <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ma'am. Nice night for Buffalo, right, eh? Oh. So that's it. Get it out before I take this piece part to it. Don't do that. But you come, get that thing out of here, you fool. But you come, don't do that, please. Watch it, watch it. I'm in trouble out here. Put that stick down, Mr. Chairman. Don't do it, Mr. Chairman. Don't do it. Hey, get that thing out of here, you fool. Get it out. Put that board down. You all right? 
think I am. What happened here? Gettysburg? Where is he? Where is he? Let me at him. Oh, 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 oh you're now beside him. I, I, I insist you shoot that horrible critter. Who, Charlie? No, it. Bill, don't let that woman at Clyde with that skillet. She's dangerous. I'll do All right, now, that's enough of that. Doesn't look to me like there's any serious damage done here. No serious damage done. This time I had my best blankets out to dry and, and that monster ruined them. Well, we've got some blankets in the supply wagon. You just calm down, Mrs. Seidel, and you can have some. Are they new ones? Brand spanky. Well, well, all right. But you stay out of my way, you, you one-man cyclone. And you too, you, no. you oversized collection of spare ribs. <laughs> All, all right, folks, now the fun's over. Let's get back to what you were doing, eh? Are you all right, Charlie? Yeah, I'm all right, Bill. Say, did you notice how Clyde jumped in that wagon? Get away from those people? He's smarter than most people, too. Would you mind telling us uh, how this all happened? Honest, Bill, it wasn't Clyde's fault. No, it wasn't, Mr. Chris. Clyde and he was just out for a little ride, and that Sherman man come charging us with a pitchfork. The meanest thing I've ever seen in my whole life. John Sherman is a nice, quiet man, Charlie. He hasn't a mean bone in his body. Uh-oh, here he comes now. And if that ain't a mean look on a man's face, I've never seen one. Well, good evening, Mr. Sherman. Pale, when we get to California, I'm gonna sue you for every cent you've got. You're what? I've got a fortune tied up in them critters, and you're gonna pay if I have to take you into the highest court in the land. Well, uh, Mr. Sherman, this is a hard trip. If your animals react adversely to it, I can't be held responsible. You'll just check the articles you signed. Uh, what I'm complaining about ain't in no articles, it's him. Him and that mangy he buffalo of his. Rosie and Maud's in love with him. With Charlie? Not me. With that buffalo. They won't even look at Toro, won't have anything to do with him. Hale, them three critters is what I'm supposed to make a breeding herd out of. All that money it cost me to get two blue ribbon cows mooning over a, a wild animal. And the best bull in the Midwest, sick with jealousy. I tell you, Hale, when I get done with you, you ain't gonna have enough left to tote a bucket of dirt from Minneapolis to St. Paul, let alone run a wagon train. I told you, you could keep Clyde only as long as he didn't cause any trouble. Yes, Mr. Hale, but... Uh, but me no buts. First there was Mrs. Seidel's laundry, then you broke up half the camp, and then you ruined her best blankets. Have you got anything personal against her, by the way? She's always got clothes out on the line. That's all. And then you've caused what I can only refer to as a serious emotional upheaval among Mr. Sherman's cow. He certainly has. Wouldn't have happened, Mr. Sherman, if you hadn't come out there waving that pitchfork around. Now, would it? You're not trying to blame that on me. Mr. Sherman, Clyde may be big, but he's very sensitive. I always talk quiet around him, you know. Look here, Hale. I wouldn't have signed on if I'd have thought I was going to have to spend all of my time keeping buffaloes away from my cows. It's, it's ridiculous. Of course it is. Situation's intolerable. Charlie, Clyde's got to go. Oh, no, Mr. Hale, please. I'll take care of Clyde. I'll keep him way down by the harness wagon, where he's no ways near Mr. Sherman's old, well, Mr. Sherman's cattle. I won't untie him around the camp anymore, honest. I'll take him way out in the brush, where he can't scare nobody, and nobody can scare him. Well, you gave me your word before, Charlie. Please, Mr. Hale. You don't know what Clyde means to me. I never had no pets before. Clyde don't care if I'm an old man with a beard, don't talk so well. He don't even care that I'm not a very good cook. I don't know what I'd do without him. All right, Mr. Sherman, I'll leave it up to you. No, I don't think I'd want the critter killed. I guess maybe if I hadn't lost my temper and yelled at the beast, maybe none of this would have happened. All right, Mr. Wooster, but you just be darn good and sure you keep that... You keep Clyde away from my cows, and I'll forget the whole thing. Thank you, Mr. Sherman. You've got a heart as big as Clyde, and I'll never forget this either. Well, I better get back to my stock. Well, there goes a fine fella. Charlie? Heart of gold, you know. Charlie. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sherman has a fair grievance. So has Mrs. Seidel, and so have the people that you and Clyde scared half to death. Well, what happened wasn't Clyde's fault. 
It still happened, though, Charlie. Yeah. Now, you're going to do exactly what you said you would. Sure. No more riding or walking Clyde anywhere around the camp. You keep him tied up and out of trouble. One more incident, and we'll quit eating salt pork around here. Yes, sir. Now, I'm not fooling, Charlie. You take him down to that harness wagon, you tie him up good. Yeah. Next mistake he makes will be his last. I understand, Miss Chris. Yes, sir. Kind of shakes you up seeing him feel this way. Well, he brought it on himself. Yeah, but I've never seen this worked up before, Chris. I wonder if he'd start bawling if somebody threatened to shoot me. You're not a dumb animal. Well, I've seen the times when he claimed I was. You know, I wish he'd gotten mad and given us a bad time. So do I. Everything's going to be all right. I'm going to bring my gear down here, and I'm going to sleep under the wagon so you won't be lonely. I'm going to give you a long rope, too, so you can just kind of roam around. Everything's going to be just fine. No, Clyde, another thing. I don't blame that Mr. Sherman's old couch. You've got his hands down on that ugly old bull. His little bitty old pig eyes. Nasty, slick hide. But it's something. You just give me a shaggy buffalo hide every time. You can't hardly beat him. Did I tell you one time, Clyde, I had a shaggy buffalo hide rope? Which most people. Oh, I'm sorry, Clyde. It wasn't really a shaggy buffalo hide robe at all. It was an old burlap I had kind of frayed out to make look like a shaggy buffalo hide. Clyde, just don't you worry. Everything's gonna be all right. Soon we'll be riding up there in the Rocky Mountains. Maybe I'll guide you all the way down to the ocean. I'll cut that out. You've never seen so much water in your whole life. And we'll ride down Market Street to San Francisco. You'll be the biggest thing on the Barbary Coast. Clyde and Charlie Wooster. I can see it now. You'll really be somebody. <laughs> and so will I. That's not likely, Mr. Hale. A little band of Indians I spotted the day before yesterday didn't look to give anybody trouble. Never saw a bunch of Indians more ragged and hungry looking. Kind of hungry myself. What do you got for supper tonight, Charlie? Old fat back fried old beans. <laughs> I thought I suggested this morning that we might have cornbread tonight. You did. Well? Ran out of cornmeal. Well, I don't want to seem nosy, Mr. Worcester, but the reason I suggested we have cornbread was because I found a five-pound sack of cornmeal in my personal tucker this morning. That's all. And if I recall correctly, I put that five-pound sack right in those grubby old meat hooks of yours and said, cornbread tonight, Charlie. Is that not what I said, Mr. Hawks? That's what you said, Mr. Hale. I was standing right there. Trouble with you, Hawks. You're always snooping around. Why are we having fried dough, Mr. Worcester? I used up all the cornmeal. How? I had it. All five pounds? I was hungry. Charlie, if you ate five pounds of cornmeal, we'd have to stake you out. You'd just blow up and fly away. What happened to him? Well, if you must know, Clyde's been off his feet lately. And I don't blame him at all, being staked out that wagon like he is. Oh, you fed my cornmeal to Clyde? Made him kind of a porridge. He's got a nervous stomach, you know. And he's delicate, he's not like the rest of us. So I just made him a little porridge. <laughs> Charlie, will you tell me what I'm gonna do with you? Mr. Chris, you've always said yourself you have to look out for dumb animals. Well, he's not so dumb, he ended up with a cornmeal. Well, you don't expect him to eat fat back and fried dough, do you? Well, several buffalo I've known personally like to eat grass. Well, he's not several buffalo, he's Clyde. <laughs> Mr. Hale. Same band I saw the other day. Hello. Welcome. Oh, Braves hunting, not war, friends. Well, that's fine. Because, as you can see, we're a very strong party. War would be bad. Hunting bad. Game gone. Too many wagons. Game run. Too many white men. No buffalo. I know, Chief. Whole tribe got bellyache. No buffalo. 
Too many white men. Too many wagons. Well, Chief, you and your friends look a little hungry. Give me great pleasure if you'd get down and have something to eat with us. Charlie, see what you can rustle up for our rap, old friend, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Chris. Just step down, gents. I'll only be a minute. There's nothing gives me more pleasure than cooking for my Indian friends. I'm part Indian myself, you know. <laughs> step down. Follow me. Wise thing to do, Chris. Well, they're hungry. Yeah, but we can't afford to have a bunch of hungry Indian braves hanging on our necks for too long. You know how they eat. It's more like a prairie fire than people. I'd rather feed them than have them hanging around stealing our horses and butchering them. I figure if I give them one good meal and some salt meat and some flour, they'll take what they got back to camp with them and leave us alone. Well, that's pretty cheap insurance at that. Gone, no good. Well, maybe they'll come back, Chief. No. Too many wagon. Bad. Another game. Buffalo food. Buffalo clothes. Buffalo bone. Make tent. Buffalo milk. Buffalo. Like fire. Arapaho. Buffalo. Like fire. Wood. Gone. Arapaho. Comanche. Sioux. Cherokee. Omaha. All gone soon. Well, uh, have some more beans, Chief. No? Well, Chief, if you want to get on the trail, I'll rustle up some salt pork and flour for you. It's not much, but it'll keep the wrinkles out of your bellies for a while. Good. Hide. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. He's just one little buffalo. Mine. Buffalo! My buffalo! Cry. Buffalo! Oh, you see, this buffalo belongs to this man. Buffalo belongs to India! Well, uh, this is different. He's a kind of a path to that dog, horse. Without buffalo, Indian die. You call him pet. You make fun Indian life. No, 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 no. listen, Chief. No! You take buffalo, we take horse. We take cow. We take squaw. We take food. You play game with buffalo. All right, all Arapaho come back, play game with you. Duke, are we going to have a fight? Mr. Hale's doing some pretty fast talking. But you better get a gun handy just in case, and spread the word. This is just one buffalo, Chief. You see, he was sick, and my friend helped him. Just one, that's all. One white, one buffalo. Soon, many white, many buffalo. Indian belly sick. You got them plenty horse, cow. Soon, Indian got them plenty horse, cow. Well, we don't want to see our Indian friends go hungry. We'll share our food with you, all you need. Chris. <clears throat> we'll give you all the flour, meat, and salt you need. All you can use for you and your families until hunting gets better. Supplies, we hardly have enough for ourselves. Yeah, well, I gotta do something. Or every Arapaho on the plains will be sniping at us day and night. We won't have a horse left in harness. They'll steal us blind. They'll be lucky if they don't round up a few hundred of their relatives and come right out and attack us. Well, I still don't like it. Well, it'll be better to go on short rations for a while and spend the next month fighting Indians. <clears throat> well, how about it, Chief? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Why don't you shut up? Tie it off. Well, there you are, Chief. That ought to be enough to last you a whole month.
next time you want them, Buffalo Pet, you tell me. I catch them. Don't go! Start by skinning you alive. Now, Bill, take it easy. Don't do anything foolish now. We're not going to do anything foolish. Those pirates just walked out of here with better than $200 worth of foodstuffs. This whole train's liable to have to go on half rations because of you and Clyde. Well, gee whiz, Mr. Chris, it wasn't Clyde's fault. And that's the last time I'm going to hear that, too. What are you going to do, Mr. Chris? What are you going to do? Bill, take that animal out somewhere and shoot it. No, Bill, please. Sure, Chris. Bill, no, please, please, Mr. Chris. No. Charlie, I warned you it was all right as long as we didn't have any serious trouble, but this has gone too far. That buffalo's got to go. Go ahead, Bill. Bill, no, please, please don't, Bill. Chris, I just remembered that Murphy wagon's got a bad axle. I've got to go check it. Duke, here. You go shoot him. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, I, I, I got a sick horse to take care of. I can't go around shooting buffalo. Look, you didn't come along just for the ride. Go shoot him. Well, Tom Gunner, it's Charlie's critter. He ought to... Don't you look at me. I'm not going to torture that poor dumb animal no more. If you've got to shoot something, shoot me. All right. I'll do it. Mr. Chris, Duke's right. I'll do it. I got tied into all of this, and I got to get him out. It ain't right. No stranger should do it. I'm serious, Charlie. I'll do it. Clyde, trust me, you'll never know what hit him. Now. Yeah. Now. Yes, sir. I had to do it. I know it. I did have to do it. I know that. Well, shut up, then. Clyde, you should have had better sense than mess around with people. Thought animals were smart. Reckon I've never known anybody I thought any more of than you. We're the same kind of folks. Clyde, I wish you hadn't have done that. Guess we even look alike. A couple old goats, I guess. No place to go in the world. Just rolling along where the wind blows. Clyde, it's like my mother used to say, you know, it's a miracle or something when you meet somebody that really loves you. Clyde, I reckon I won't meet anybody like you anymore. I reckon I don't want to hurt you too much. Clyde, just take a look out that way. Lots of land out there. Good buffalo grass. Tall as your hump. There's a little she buffalo out there. Somewhere just a waiting for you too. Bye, Clyde. I'll be looking for you. I can't do it. I'm gonna stop him. I was here and pulled the trigger. Just like killing myself. It was awful. Charlie, I'm sorry I made you do it. It's all right, Mr. Chris. Clyde's buddy on your hands. It's on these old hands. Guess I'll just have to live with it. Clyde, don't go on you, Clyde. Sometimes.
Holmes, I don't think you've got good sense. I told you to get it. It's better be good. Mr. Crisp, honest, I was fixing to shoot him. Had the gun laying right alongside of his ear there. He turned around and looked up at me with them big eyes, and ain't no man living could pull that trigger. So I laid the gun alongside of his head and fired it. Kicked him in the slats a couple times, and by rights, he should be halfway to Canada by now. Yes, sir. You know, Chris, we ought to run across more buffalo any day. I figure if we take Clyde and keep him tied up around the clock, when we do run across that herd, we can turn him loose, and one will get you 100, he'll join up with him, we'll never see him again. Makes sense, Mr. Hale. Buffalo will run 100 miles to find another buffalo. Uh, well, since it doesn't seem to be a man on the whole train with craw enough to shoot the critter, I guess we'll have to try. But he's your responsibility, Bill, and he better stay out of trouble. Don't worry about that, Chris. I'll tie him off the supply wagon. He figures on going any place, he'll have to drag a couple tons of wagon along with him. And don't you go messing around with him either. Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Hawks. You're the boss, you know. some wood for splints. I'll let you tend to one of the boys' fault. I can't let that make any difference. The boy's hurt. Could have been killed. That doesn't give us any choice. Mr. Hale. Oh, hello, Miss Seidel. Few excuses. Uh, you're looking for Mr. Worcester, aren't you? Well, that's right. Have you seen him? About an hour ago. Ask me to give you this. Well, was that supposed to mean something? That he found it in Clyde's side. Said it belongs to that Sherman boy. Where'd you see Charlie? Right here. He was putting some things together. I think he ran away, Mr. Hill. I know he's a grown man, but I think that's what he did. In between us, I don't blame him, Mr. Hill. I think of the way I treated him. Yes, I know how you must feel, Mr. Seidel. Well, thank you very much. I know she's right, Chris. These things are gone. You better get after him. Well, not tonight. In the morning. It'll be a long way away by then. Not if he has Clyde with him. How do you hurry up a buffalo? <laughs> We go to California or Wyoming or someplace. Or anywhere with a lot of open country and tall grass. Just you and me. We don't need anybody else. No more wagon trains for us. Anybody comes around bothering you, too. I'll dust them off with that shotgun. Don't you worry about that, you betcha. Well, maybe if Chris or Bill or some of them come by to stop in for a cup of my coffee, we'll let them sit for a while. We'll keep an eye on them, too. You betcha that. Well, Clyde, I guess we better get going, huh? Find that ranch. covering a lot of ground on that buffalo, Chris. Yeah. Those tracks are awful fresh. We can catch up with him by nightfall if we hurry. Clyde, what the 
What's the matter with you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. you trying to break my neck or something? You smell Indians or rattles or something? What's the matter now? Hold on, boy. Stop. You're acting like this. Right. I didn't see that she buffalo up there. I don't blame you none either. But Clyde, that sort of thing's gonna have to wait till we get our ranch. You remember? Clyde! Oh, Clyde! Doggone you, Clyde! Come back here! Clyde, you leave her alone! Clyde! Clyde! Clyde, you're forgetting our ranch in California! Clyde, this is your old buddy Charlie, you remember? Clyde, I've given up everything for you! Clyde? Clyde? Charlie? Yeah. Where's Clyde? Well, he, uh, he, uh... Charlie, you know you couldn't keep him forever. When you found him, he was hurt, scared, lonely. When you helped him, you were his friend. Sooner or later, he's bound to leave. I reckon you're right, Mr. Chris. I'm a people. I ain't buffalo. Guess he took my advice. How was that, Charlie? I told him when we got to California, we'd start a buffalo ranch. Looks like that's what he's got in mind, too. That's all the earmarks of it. I'm gonna miss him, Mr. Chris. You know, it was almost like Clyde and me was brothers. Well, cheer up, Charlie. You might have lost old Clyde, but you know, you're gonna be the only man in history that'll be an honest to Pete Buffalo's uncle. Yeah. Yeah. I will, won't I? <laughs> Buffalo is uncle. Dead or alive for wholesale robbery and murder. The outlaw known as that. Uh, known as that. Uh, Angel de muerte. I can see that. In Spanish means angel of death. I can see that too. Reward. Ten thousand dollars. I never heard of a reward that big before. <laughs> you never heard of an outlaw like muerte before either. He raids towns, army posts, even wagon trains. Did you say wagon trains? Yeah. And he always seems to know when to strike, like he has spies everywhere. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to lollygag around here let spies tell him about it. us and these horses. Let's get out of here. Who are you waving at? I'm not waving, Charlie. I'm just stretching. Well, let's do that later. Come on. The car just waved. That's a signal. Come on, let's go get us some horses. Gonna wait, Charlie. The bandits, ain't they? There's no sense getting shot for a few horses. Put the gun away. All right, turn over those horses. Lift your guns out easy and drop them on the ground. <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to tell me what just happened didn't happen. You thought they got the horses. How it happens what I'm talking about, what I saw. All right, Charlie, what did you see? I saw you wave to someone. A minute later, four bandits ride down on us. I saw you do something, act like you've never acted before in your life. Not putting up a fight and not letting me. I saw four men ride off with the horses, leaving yours and mine. You saw quite a bit, didn't you? Is that all you've got to say? What would you like me to say? Well, tell me I'm loco in the head or something. Tell me I didn't see it. Tell me I dreamed it. Just tell me it ain't so, that's all. 
And I won't ask you what it was that bandit passed you. You saw that too, huh? Flint, quit pulling my leg. Tell me you're funning or something. Just tell me it was a joke. You call $500 a joke? Hmm? But why, Flint? Why? Because I'm sick and tired of this job. I'm through scouting. I'm gonna relax and take it easy, but it takes money to do that. So stop looking so shocked and upset. I had a little money deal and you caught me at it. That's all there is to it. You've never done this before, Flint. You can't start now. You can raise the rest of the money somewhere. Mr. Chris will help you. I know he will. And we won't say a thing about it. Not on your life, Charlie. I've made up my mind. I plan to go back to the wagon train with you, but seeing you feel the way you do, I'll just say goodbye to you right now. Clint, I'm asking as a friend. Don't do it. Please don't. So long, friend. Clint? I got my gun on you. and Don't try to make a fight of it. I'll have to wing you. And you know yourself, I'm not the shot I used to be. I'm liable to blow a whole plum through you. What's the matter with you, you old goat? You gone clean out of your mind? What do you mean by pulling a gun on Flint? Put that thing away before you hurt somebody. It's no more of an outlaw than I am. I know he ain't, but he's trying to be. All right, Charlie. How much time did you spend in a saloon at Henderson? I wasn't in no saloon at all. We went to Fort Henderson to buy some horses from Major Hanson, and that's all we done. Flint, why don't you say something and put this old coot in his place? Don't pick on Charlie. He's just trying to be my friend. Well, he's not much of a friend telling lies about you. Who said he's lying? Bill, send a rider into Fort Henderson and get Major Hanson. We'll need his testimony. Lock him in the prison wagon. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. So, in view of Major Hanson's testimony, that the defendant, Flint McCullough, together with Charles Worcester did purchase 12 horses from the army at Fort Henderson. And in view of Mr. Worcester's testimony concerning the subsequent theft of those horses and the circumstances surrounding the robbery, the defendant has seen fit to make a full confession of his complicity in the crime and has thrown himself upon the mercy of this court. The defendant rise, please. We are all aware of the seriousness of horse stealing, particularly in territory where a horse often means the difference between life and death for its owner. For that reason, such a crime is often punishable by death and not always with benefit of a trial. However, I have taken into consideration the fact that no such serious consequences resulted from your action. A large part of the money has been returned to its rightful owners. I must also consider the fact that you have voluntarily made a confession of a first offense and, of course, your invaluable past services to this wagon train. But you have committed a crime, and such a crime cannot go unpunished. I therefore sentence you to receive 20 lashes from a bullwhip in the hands of one of your peers and to be banished forever from this community on wheels wherever it may go. Sentence to be carried out immediately. One more thing. I must ask for a volunteer to effect this sentence. First man to approach this table will be accepted. This court's adjourned. I still need a volunteer. Now, I know how you feel about Flint McCullough, and I appreciate your sentiment, but his sentence must be carried out. You certainly realize the necessity for discouraging such crimes through punishment. Well, I guess it's up to one of us. Bill? You asking me, Chris, or telling me? I'm asking you. But you'll have to refuse. I don't have the stomach to lay a bull whip to the back of a friend of mine, no matter what he's done. And if I order you? I'm hoping real hard that you won't. Charlie. I turned him in. What more you want from me? Begging your pardon, Mr. Hale. I've got no personal feelings for you, prisoner. If I could take the chore off your back, I'd be glad to oblige. You heard the sentence, Sergeant Oakes? Yes, sir. Twenty lashes.
want you to understand. This isn't anything personal. I understand, so you get it over with. By the way. Boys enjoy this uh, coffee. <laughs> coffee? <laughs> Serve us anything like this at the fourth, the mess sergeant will be court martialed and shot the next morning. Who made it anyway? I don't know. Uh, they lynched him before I found out his name. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hill been around here lately? Uh, he and Major Hanson rode off a little while ago. That fellow Hawks. Yeah, which way they go? They didn't say. I got a hunch they might be trailing the color, though. See if he can lead them to the bandits that stole the horses. Sergeant Oakes, you've been in the Army a long time. You think it could have been that uh, bandit. Uh, Murty? Well, Mayor, they're supposed to have spies everywhere. Maybe McCullough's one of them. Well, this looks like it. I don't suppose you're ready to tell me what we're doing out here now, are you? We're gonna meet somebody. Well, whoever it is, you must be late. I don't think so. Alex, all your Alex questions will be answered in due time, Mr. Hawks, but first let's make our friend as comfortable as possible. I brought some salve, Flint. I think it's going to help. Well, well as one I'll good thing that. came out of all this. You found out how many good friends you had back there when nobody picked up that whip. Yeah, it was just about that time that I was wishing I hadn't allowed you to let yourself in for this. Oh, I hate to act nosy, but I hear you say something about Flint letting himself in for this. Well, Charlie saw those bandits. He didn't dream it up. No, he saw him all right. Meet the bandit leader. Three officers and I perpetrated that hoax. Hoax? Uh, that robbery was for Charlie's benefit, Bill, so that Flint could be disgraced and banished to the life of an outlaw. Are those welts on his back a put-up job? No, they're real. A little too real, I think. These welts are Flint's badge of dishonor, his passport into the world of Angel de Muerte. Muerte? Muerte has to be stopped, Mr. Hawks. For three years now, he's been making fools out of all of us. Plundering, murdering. Flint McCullough's the only man I know who could even find him. One man? Are you gonna send one man up to Black Rock Mountain to try to catch the toughest outlaw that ever lived? You know, a sharpshooter with one rifle could hold off that pass against a hundred soldiers. I know. We've tried it. Well, what chance do you think one man will have then? A better chance than a hundred soldiers, or even two hundred. Flint, why did you let him talk you into a fool stunt like this? Are you tired of living? You know what Muerte did to the last wagon train that went through this territory? No. He wiped him out. And he didn't leave any witnesses. Well, that's another thing. If no one's ever seen this Muerte, how are you gonna know him when you run into him? If I get into his camp, I'll know who he is. Yeah, if he doesn't find out this was a put-up job. Mm -hmm. He won't. That's why we went to so much trouble to prove Flint had turned out law. We're counting on his spies to get the word to Muerte. How does that feel now? Ain't any easier? That's better. I can guarantee I won't have to do any faking for a few days. Then I've got a, I got a lead for you. There's a small ranch at the foot of Black Rock Mountain. That's about a two-day ride from here, and it's run by a man named Sam Upton and his sister Madge. I'll show you how to get there. For a long time now, we've suspected that Sam Upton works with Morty, shuttles supplies up to his mountain stronghold, and even handles some of his stolen livestock and goods. Now, we haven't been able to prove this, but at least it's a starting point for you. I'll find it. I might as well get started. Get your horse for you. 
I'll keep the train camped right where it is for a week, Flint. We haven't heard from you by then. Then you'll know that I've failed. Good luck. Bring Murty in. Flint will have little trouble with the rest of his men. His whole outfit will fall apart without his leadership and cunning. I'll do my best, Hank. Thanks. Oh, uh, tell Charlie I'm sorry I had to keep him in the dark about this, but don't tell him for a week. I think it'll be safer for me if he goes around with a sad face. He should be going with you, Flint. I think by the time I'm finished with this, I wish you had. chance, Bill. A chance. With 50 to 100 men in Wardy's hideout to protect him? Even if he does get to him, how's he gonna get him out? Dead or alive. need your gun. There's nobody here but me. My name's Madge Upton. What's yours? Look, you came to see me. I didn't come to see you. Well, whoever you are, you must have been a pretty bad boy to get a spanking like you just had. Oh. You're lucky they took your shirt off. I've seen them when they didn't. Do you always have to come bursting in like that, Sam? One of these days, you're gonna knock that door right off its hinges, and then you just have to fix it. You sent a signal. How'd I know you weren't in trouble? Who's he? Didn't say. Still probably mad because somebody worked him over with a bullwhip. Looks fresh, too. I'd say a couple of days. Oh? Well, that'd make him, uh, Flint McCullough. McCullough? The Indian scout. Yeah. Got caught stealing horses from his own wagon train. Turned in by one of his best friends, they say. Exactly who are they? What's the difference just as long as I'm right, huh? Now, what are you doing around here? Why well, ask? You're the bright boy with all the answers. Ah, Don't you ever that. talk to me like that. Sam, let go of him. He's sick. Not too sick to get his head split. Ah. Don't you ever do that to me again! I've told you and told you and told you to stop treating me like a little boy! To learn to control that temper of yours, because one day you might forget and you'll turn it loose on me, and that's the day I leave. You tried to leave once, remember? But you weren't the one who stopped me, Sam. Sam! Next time you go up Black Rock Mountain, tell him Morty I want to see him. Tell him I want to join up, that's what I'm here for. Fix it so I can get up there. Or aren't you a big enough man to fix it? 
I can fix it. Don't you worry. I'll be able to ride tomorrow, Sam. Tomorrow. Got his number pretty quick, didn't you? I haven't got yours yet. Don't try. You know, you know that brother of yours liable to kill you one day. I think you have a lot more to worry about than what Sam might do to me. Muerte could decide to send me back here to kill you, you know. Yeah, I guess he could have done. You're welcome. Not the best job that's ever been done, but at least it's clean. Here we go. All right, John. A little bit further down. That's it. Ah. You know, you better lie down. You've been up and around most of the day. It was only yesterday you could hardly move. Got a good nurse. You look very much at home standing here at this ironing board. Had enough practice. My mother died when I was six. Haven't you ever wanted to have a family of your own? I have a family. His name's Sam. You know what I mean. I mean a husband, kids. You look as though you'd fit that picture. Whether I would or not isn't any of your business. That's right. I was just trying to be friendly. Well, don't try. You're not the first outlaw I've nursed back to help in this house. Sooner or later, they all want to get friendly. Oh, don't get the idea you're any different than the rest of them. Well, if you have so little regard for men in my profession, why do you stay? Are you really that concerned about me? Yes, I am. I can't figure you out. You might get burned trying. I don't think so. I can practically guarantee it. Ow! All right, have it your own way. Maybe this is where you belong. There's many in that sick brother of yours. Maybe you just look like a woman. Let me put some butter on her thumb. Oh, Sam wasn't always like he is. He used to be a good boy. Oh, hot-tempered. But a good brother. Then he was with Dad when they killed him. Who were they? A whole bunch of men. Soldiers. Rowdy cowhands. Drinking the saloon to Fort Henderson. They were having some fun with the bartender by making him dance for him. And kept him moving by shooting at his feet, you know, several of them. We'd gone to the fort for supplies. Dad wanted to stop by and have just one drink. I was waiting alone in the wagon. Some fun-loving soldiers decided I should join them, so they picked me up and took me in the saloon. Dad tried to stop them. Somebody. Somebody shoved him into the middle of the floor, and he fell, stumbled, the bartender's feet. Nobody knew whose bullet it was that hit him, but 
Sam was there. He was only 14, but he saw it all. Oh, it was such a useless, senseless, unnecessary way to die. Sam kept saying that over and over again. Couldn't forgive them for being so stupid. He was closer to his father than a boy usually is, I guess. Since there was no one person to blame, he blamed everybody. He declared war on a whole human race, and he's been striking back ever since. He started running with those bandits three years ago. That doesn't mean you owe him your life. I know too many things about Muerte's crimes. He'd never let me leave. Even if Sam would. But I am a woman. Flint. Well, it's safer than working alone. There's more money in it, probably. You know you can't ever leave, don't you, once you've seen Morty? That's what I've been told. Flint. Right out of here now before it's too late to turn back, please. It's already too late for me. I'm afraid it's too late for both of us. Sam's coming. I saw him when I was outside. Maybe coming back with an order to kill me. That's not going to make any difference. He won't give you a chance anyway. McCullough, you better give me a gun before we start. Muerte doesn't like newcomers wearing them until he's had a chance to look them over. I imagine. Thanks. Thanks for it. Thanks for everything. Bye, Flint. Didn't you hear what I said? Give me your gun! I never give my gun to anyone. A few men have tried to take it from me. Would you like to be next? Maybe I will. Yeah, maybe I will. When I feel like it. Now, let's go. After you. Now? Well, you've got yourself a fair amount of help. You want to try? Well, I'm ready. Get off and wait
caller. Anel Di Muerte wants to see you. Inside. After you. This is Flynn McCullough, the one I was telling you about. I'll leave you two alone. Be back in 15 minutes. Sam tells me you do not like him very much. Is this anybody? That is not important. It is whether I like you. That is important. Figure. about you, McCullough. A good Indian scout gets hurt of quite a bit. You must use your head to stay alive. I need a man who can use his head and his gun. What do you think of working with Sam? With him or for him? It's up to you. Don't you care what happens to him? I do not like him much. He's getting too big for his pants. You testing me, Muerte? You must learn to trust me. I must learn to trust you. I cannot afford to have a man around I cannot trust on his first assignment. Yeah, but it could be a trap. That is where you must trust me. There's a big reward for you. Maybe I'm after that. That is where I must trust you? Ah, but my muchachos outside, they would not like to lose me. They never have so much gold as they have now. Do you mind if I have an apple? They are out of season. Hard to get. I cannot afford to waste them on outsiders. Good. I will call Sam. Do you want one? I said they were hard to get. Do not waste them. Sam! I think we can use McCullough. I'll let you fill him in on how things work around here. Sure, be glad to. Be glad to help out the newcomer. Who knows, we might even wind up being friends. You think that could happen, friend? <laughs> now listen to me, kid, and listen good. You and I haven't exactly hit it off up to now, but that's all changed. Is that right? You're in a lot of trouble around here, but if you listen to me, I think I can help you get out of it. You're gonna help me? Where do he wants you dead? He thinks I'm doing it right now. Well, then I wouldn't be telling me about it. I don't want to argue with you, kid. Don't call me kid. Listen, I promised your sister I'd look after you. She worries about you, boy. She... I am not a boy! Of course you're not. Does that mean you can't lean on somebody else when you're in trouble? That's all I'm saying. Trust me, I've had experience. I can get you out of this. You need more help than I do. Listen, if you want to get out of this alive, kid, you're going to take orders from me. I don't take orders, I give them. Not from where they you. I am where they me, Sam, after I am another boy. That's what I figured. I just had to be sure. Look. You put me to a test and I passed it. Now, nothing has changed. I came up here to join up with Angel Muerte, and I'm ready. Madge couldn't have tipped you off. She didn't know herself. Who was it? You. You tipped me off. Not in so many words, of course. Go on. Anybody that runs an organization as big as this runs it all the time. He's the boss. If the real Muerte had been sitting here when I walked in, he'd have told you when to come back and when to leave. But you told him. He said, I'll be back in 15 minutes. And it was an order. That wasn't much to go on. Your sister told me you worked for Muerte for three years. You said it, Sam. You wouldn't take orders for three minutes, let alone three years. You're the kind that gives orders, right? That's right. You are a smart one, McCullough. That I gotta admit. You are a smart one, McCullough. Smart enough to know that you weren't worried about me being able to carry out the assignment. You figured that's fast, huh? Plenty fast. Anybody runs an organization this big, it's got to be fast. You wouldn't have any respect. You are so right. But your friend, uh... Joe? Yeah. He's not fast. You tried him? With an apple. I tossed an apple to him to check his reflexes, you know, and went right past it. On your feet. One shot in this place will be swarming. And you're dead. So on your feet. You sure fooled me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
That's a pretty good trick. You and me, McCullough, we're gonna make a great team. On the table, face down. What do you want? What do you got? On the table, face down. Spread Eagle. What kind of a stunt is this, McCullough? You're gonna end your career right where you started it, kid. At Fort Henderson. Do you think you can get me out of here? I'm gonna try. I got a dozen sharpshooters out there that could pick you off at a thousand yards and never scratch me. You know what would happen if they did that? They'd shoot me and I'd fall, and the weight of my body would put pressure on this rope and... Of course, it would make uh, a little more noise when it's loaded. friend Joe in here and explain this rig to him. And you better hope you've got a friend out there in case somebody tries to take a shot at me. Joe! Joe, come in here! And do not use your guns. You hear me? And when they come out, do not make any moves that might scare the horses. He's got the rope tied around his waist. We will think what to do on this later. Right now we do it like this. Sam says so. Now stand back. Make way! I hope you don't have any enemies out here, but we're soon going to find out. Shut your mouth. You're not going to pull that cord unless you've had it yourself. You're only safe as long as I'm alive. Joe, listen to me. I knife McCullough. He can't make it to the fort. Pick a half a dozen men. Follow us. Don't shoot. Just follow us. Wait for your chance. He can't make it to the fort. Do you understand, Joe? Si. I understand, amigo. We keep you inside all the way. Bueno, bueno. Got you better than I thought. You can't make it, can Thank you. 
I don't imagine you're gonna make it without some help, are you? Ah, oh, it's too bad. Yeah, because I don't imagine you have many friends in these parts. I might have a friend with that. Get down, Sam. Flint, I don't understand. We're coming in, Madge. But you're hurt. Get down, Sam. Quick, Madge, untie the rope. Be careful. One shock in the shack and I'll take my head off. Come on, move. Madge. Madge, help me. Sam is... is muerte. Help me to take him in and you... you help yourself. You? Muerte? All right, so I am. And I got a half a dozen of my men outside. I've been following us, just waiting for them to pass out. Now, you call up to them and tell them everything's all right. But untie that rope first. I'm getting tired of this thing pointing up at me. Now, hurry it up, will you? But untie the rope first. I'm getting tired of this thing pointing up at me. Hurry up, will you? Be careful when you untie the trigger, though. If you slip it out nice and easy. What are you waiting for? Sit on the chair, Sam. Well, listen, maybe... Maybe you better cut this thing loose. Sit first. in the chair, Sam. What do you mean, sit? What are you doing back there? Don't move suddenly, Sam. I'll try to get up from the chair because you're tied to it. Madge, what are you trying to do? Get me killed? Now turn me loose. Oh, I've wanted to be turned loose for a long time, Sam. I even tried to run away once. But six men, six, came after me and caught me before I got to the fort and brought me back here. I know that. You've already told me. But I didn't tell you all of it, Sam. Those men didn't leave right away. They said their boss told them they could collect their own reward if they caught me. Huh. I didn't want to tell you because I was afraid you might get killed trying to make them pay for what they did to the sister. That's kind of funny, isn't it, Sam? I wanted to protect you from your own men who were acting under your orders at the time. Oh, Sam, I didn't know you hated me that much. Madge. I'm your brother. You gotta help me. I don't have a brother. He was killed at Fort Henderson with his father. Yeah. yeah. Because of you. Part right because of you. Floating around in front of those soldiers. Coming into the saloon with them. Yeah. Part died because he got in the way of your fun. Oh, Sam, you really believe that, don't you? Madge. Madge, you're gonna help me. Madge, you've always helped me. Madge, you promised me you promised Pa! You said you'd always look out for me, Madge! <laughs> chance I had to trust somebody. But you're going to have to pay for it. Now you're going to have to arrange passage for me on your wagon train. Flint, I'm free. For the first time in my life, I'm not afraid. We're not out of the ship, you know. I know. I saw the light from the camp last night through the window. Yeah, but the closer we get to the fort, the more dangerous they're going to be. Flint, let me go to the fort. I can ride faster than you can. You'd never get around them. Never get around them. But if you went in a different direction, 
As soon as we get out of here, I want you to ride south by the river road. You'll pick up the wagon train. Get a pencil and a paper, I'll give you enough for the wagon, master. Right. find our man there. Tell him what is happening. Perhaps a soldier can get close enough to grab the line that is tied to the gun. See, si, Jose, except for one thing. Yeah. This man who spies for us in the army, we do not know his name. Oaks. Sergeant Oaks. Oaks. Muy bien, Jose. Oye, Juanito, tú te vas a encargar de esto. Left of them. Glad to see you, Sergeant, and without that whip of yours. Uh, like I told you, nothing personal, is it? Looks like you've been hurt again. Yeah, I got knocked a little. Be careful with that rope. You, you see what it's tied to. Well, that's a pretty fancy rig. At least I can pick this off your hands. Who is he? They call that one on Hill de Muerte. Muerte? Well, Kelly, you must be joshing. Uh, he looks too young. Hey! him all at once. Go around the other side of the rock. I do not think that is such a good idea. He has only fired one shot and reduce our number by one. It's a very good shot. You will do as I say. Come on. I told him it was not a good idea. Now we have no leader at all. Maybe we'll find another one in Mexico. Venga. <laughs> nothing to run away from now. Besides, this has always been my home. I've got a good ranch. I'll go to the fort and stay there a while, and then I'll... I'll go back to here. Maybe someday you'll be riding this way. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Stay away from bull whips and bandits. Do my best. See you, Flynn. Bye, Major. With him. Oh, he's got a sore head because we wouldn't let him in on things. Well, I found out who my friends was anyway. Well, Charlie, you helped convince people I was an outlaw. I didn't have gotten to Moretti's camp without you. You mean I helped you catch that bandit Moretti? You sure did, friend. Well, how about half the reward money, friend? 
<laughs> well, you're too late, Charlie. I'm sorry. I already told the Major to give half of it to Madge Upton. Well, how about half of your half, friend? I'm not greedy, you know. Now, wait a minute. I'll settle for less. Average as much as 10 miles. You have to take advantage of the normal days because we figure to lose a lot of miles fighting rain, sleet, snow, wind, a never ending struggle against the elements, the constant threat of men who died hard protecting their hunting grounds. It was enough to make a wagon master gray before his time if he was lucky enough to keep his scalp on his own head. When men, women, and children face eternity, you see a lot of what is true, good and bad. And one thing stands out. Men, women, and children don't kill for themselves. They do what they must do for each other, for the family. Yes, sir, on a wagon train, you couldn't miss what strength there was in a family or what weaknesses. The families had to stay together to survive. You and I know that isn't as easy as it sounds. But Tina May went west with her two sons and daughter. And what happens when there are families inside of families is her story. A wagon train is a small city on wheels, a rolling village of families. They left a place called home, and they left practically everything behind them. Left everything behind except their problems. To be part of the family was to owe your life to children, to have an obligation to your brother or sister, or to be a mother like Bettina May. Mother of Nathan, her firstborn, who married Mabel. Mother of Arthur, who married Rose. Mother of Ginny, who was to have Eugene Kiefer's child and make Bettina May a grandmother for the fourth time. Someone once said, children begin by loving their parents. As they grow older, they judge them. Sometimes they forgive them. Wally? Maggie? Where are you going? No way, Grandma. Ma. Last one in the top of the polka. Well, stay in sight. Oh, Mother, leave them alone. You can't just leave children alone out here. Anything can happen. Why don't you let Nathan and Arthur worry about their children? I do. I let them worry, but I do something about it. Hit him on the bridge of the nose. A little bloody, but it'll be all right. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. What did you do? Huh? What did you do? Nate! Now, now, Matt. What happened, Matty? Now, now tell Grammy so we can help your brother. I hit him with the rock. I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean to kill him. He'll be all right, Mrs. May. Rock just broke the skin. <laughs> And I'll guarantee you'll have two of the most colorful eyes inside of the Rockies. You go back to the wagon, Mattie. Stop crying and do as I tell you. There you go. Mattie, you look at me, boy. How many times have I told you not to throw rocks, huh? You're going to get the whipping of your life. Son!
I'll take you, Mabel. Now, you just calm down. You'll be all right. Yes, this is crappy. Yes. You're going to be all right. All right. If she... If she took my child out of my arms... Well, she just better not. What'd you say? I said... When are we gonna stop her? Rose. Maybe you want to go back to your mother's arms. It's my husband. Two days. Yep. <laughs> you want to ask them? Nope. But you want to spend some time in Kingsville while the rest of the train's splitting up? You know, Charlie, I hear that town's become quite an oasis. It's the truth. I got it from a disreputable old character. He told me he's never been in town so bad in his life. Bark won't burn. It's damp. Are you afraid to ask him? Yep. You're forgetting one thing, Bill. This is going to be our last chance to enjoy the evils of civilization for a long time, you know. I'm not forgetting. Well. If you're half the man you say you are, you ask him. Ask who for? What are you doing? Get the fire bill. That won't burn, Chris. That bark's damp. <laughs> Come on, cheer up, Charlie. That's life. Give a little, take a little. Yeah, we're going to be there in two days, you know. Yeah. Suppose you want a hooray this next town like you did the last one, huh? Well, not exactly, but I'd just like to give a little and take a little, like you said. Yeah. He did more to ruin the reputation of the wagon train by giving a little and taking a lot. Boy, I only got half the time, you know. That's no excuse. No, maybe not, but it's a doggone good reason, ain't it? <laughs> Charlie, why don't you grow up? Find a nice woman your own age, settle down, marry her. Why don't you? Well, I might. I'll find the right woman again. How are you going to know when you find the right woman? There ain't nobody that smart. You gamble. You find a good woman, you get much happiness. You find a bad one, you become a philosopher. Old Chinese proverb. Philosopher, huh? I guess I fixed him up. <laughs> yeah, you fixed him, so we won't be corrupted by civilization for some time. What kind of a woman do you think Mr. Hale would marry? Well, uh, women are kind of like horse trading. Now, you take a thoroughbred like Miss Bettina May and you got some. Bettina May? What for? I mean, well, at her age. Her age? Son, what do you know about age? Life begins at 50. Yeah, for them, it's willing to start all over again. Mrs. May's a grandmother. You don't mean to say that she... I mean to say that any time she's willing to lead her own life. Well, what would your generation know about aged wine anyway? She won't get any thanks from her sons and daughters for running their lives the way she has. Well, that's sure enough. Did you see the way her daughter-in-law Rose puffed up when Mrs. May took that hurt kid right out of the mother's arms? Yeah, and I saw enough to bet my last bottle that that family's riding for a fall. Well, what do you mean? What do I mean? What do I mean? When is the last time you gave your mother something in return for... For what? Well, there's only one thing wrong with being over 50. What's that, Charles? The people under 50. I have to finish what I'm doing. You think the least you would do is keep me company? You think it'd be more important than whatever it is you're up to? It's a surprise. Well, you men and your surprises. I could die having your baby. It wouldn't surprise me if you went out looking for another girl right away. Jenny, you're not going to die. Having babies is natural. <laughs> well, that's easy for you to say. As if it weren't enough that Wally's eyes are black and blue, Nathan whipped Matty, and he's sick from crying. Jean, I can't hear you. If you leave me alone... Jean, are you there? Yes, I'm right here. Now you go to sleep. 
you think my mother would care, even if you don't. <laughs> Nathan's brats would like to kill each other. I'd better have a girl. If I have a brat like Nathan's, I'd rather die. Jean, are you there? Yes, your mother... I won't go to sleep until my mother is here. Go get her. You go to Ginny. Mm -hmm. going to be another week. She's kicking. Where's mother? She won't come. She's staying with Wally. She has no right. He only has a black eye and I could die. Jenny, Jenny, you must stop counting on your mother. What? You're grown up, Jenny. You're going to be a mother. You've got me to think about. Now, I promise I won't let anything happen to you. We don't need your mother. You have no right to say that. I do need her. And she needs us. You just hate her because she's always here. You just don't want her around. Jenny. If you send her away, whatever you do to her, you do to me. You just don't understand. What's there to understand? You don't want my mother around. You don't think it's fair. You think she should live with Nathan or Arthur? No, I didn't say that. Well, Nathan won't have her. He's hard and cold and selfish like my father. Your father was a military and Arthur man. has no spine. That peasant wife of his wears his pants. She's an ungrateful daughter-in-law. Just like you're a hateful son-in-law. Virginia. When are you going to grow up? I hope I die having your baby. Then you can get rid of my mother, too. Oh, go away. Leave me alone. I hate you. It's all your fault. Everything. In two days, we'll be where they meet the other wagon trains. What? I said, in two days, we'll be where they meet the other wagon trains. I know. Sweetheart. Will you stop calling me sweetheart? Jesus, it's bad enough you act like a dandy. Don't talk like one. I'm sorry, Rose. You're sorry. You're sorry. Are you going to do something or aren't you? You're always sorry. This is our last chance. I'll, t I'll tell her tomorrow. For eight years, you've been going to tell her tomorrow. Look, maybe I don't want to do this to my mother. Maybe you just don't want to do this to your mother. Maybe you're afraid to do this to yourself. No, I don't think that is anything. I don't care what you think. Now, either we get away from this family of yours and your mother, or... Or what? Look, I'm your husband, and Priscilla's my daughter. So there's nothing that you can do. There isn't, huh? Do you think I can go on like this the rest of my life? Do you think I want a husband who's not a man? Do you think I want my daughter to grow up to be a sniveling coward like her father? Uh-uh. If you don't do something, I'll do something. If we don't get away from your mother, I'll do something. My mother never did anything to make you hate her. You hate her because she's a lady. And your mother was nothing but a peasant from the old country. No, I don't hate her. I hate you for not being able to let go of her apron strings. Don't try to blame me on your mother. It's your fault. Until you get away from her, you're nothing. I've got nothing. I haven't got a husband. I haven't got a home. I won't have any more children. You're not a man. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I have to see my mother. Well, she's not with your sister. You'll find her over at Nathan's wagon. That nice brother of yours wasn't satisfied having one child hurt. He had to whip the other one within an inch of his life. This child is more than I can bear. Honest, it was an accident. Matthew, 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 wake up. Wake up, it's Grammy. Ah, oh, yes, it's Grammy. No. Oh, you're all right. Now you go back to sleep now. We're all right, Mr. Hale. Thank you. Glad to help. Good morning, Mabel. I hope they had a better night's sleep than we did. Don't wake them. They need lots of sleep. Thank Mr. Hale, the leeches drew out all the bad blood. Nathan has himself ill over the whipping he gave Maddie. Good. He had to teach him. Nathan's just like his father. He never did learn. But you can teach more with kindness than with the end of a stick. Mabel, get the boys ready to travel. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, son. Mother, we appreciate you staying with them last night. Oh, well, I didn't expect thanks. Mabel, what are you waiting for? Will you get the boys up and washed? Can't expect Mother to do that for you, too. Nathan, say a kind word to Matty to take the sting out of the whipping and the knots out of your stomach. Mother, when are you gonna leave us alone? You treat me as if I was still in short pants. I treat you as I want to treat you. I am still your mother. Now you do as I tell you. And if you ever use a stick on those boys again, I'll use one on you. Well, you're not gonna run me or my family anymore. Nathan, I don't want to run your family. Well, then leave me alone. 
If I thought you could take care of yourself and them, I would be delighted to leave you all alone. Please, Mama. Let's not get into that again. Nathan, if you need me, you know where I'll be. I'm going to do something about her. Wait and see. She's your mother. Mabel, pick up those blankets. to see you right away. Something wrong, Prissy? Father's run away. Mother's inside. Will you go to Uncle Jean's and Aunt Jimmy's and have your breakfast? And don't say anything about your father and mother, understand? Okay. What's the matter, Rose? You know what's the matter. Well, I only know what you told Prissy to tell me. Why did she think her father ran away? She must have overheard us quarreling. Well, did he say he was going off somewhere? No! Prissy made that up. Out of the mouths of babes. Where is Arthur? You know! I don't know. Oh, didn't he come to you? I haven't seen Arthur since Mattie hit Wally. You're lying! What did you quarrel about? Where is my husband? Prissy? Prissy, come here, right away. Prissy's confused enough. I don't want her to know any more than she already knows. Prissy may know more than you think she does. What did you say to Arthur that made you so sure he came to me? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, we said so many things. What difference does it make now? Mm, it could make the difference of your life and his life. Grandma! And... Prissy, come here. Why did you think your father ran away? I don't know. Did he say he was going somewhere? I don't know. Prissy, grown-ups act like children sometimes. They say things they don't mean, just like children say nasty things to each other. Prissy. Prissy, come here, baby. Oh, Prissy, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Prissy. Forgive me. I love your father, and I didn't mean to hurt him. And I hurt you, too, and I'm sorry. Prissy, forgive me. Forgive me, Prissy. Rose, I'll try and find Arthur. It, it's gonna be all right. We're gonna kiss and make up just like you kids do. All right? Jean, do you? I hope you'll stay with Ginny, Bettina. She's terrified. She thinks the time is coming. She keeps saying she's gonna die. Oh, no, don't lose your head, too, Jean. The baby won't come for a week or two. Where is Arthur? I don't know. Did you see him last night? Did you see Arthur last night? If you're trying to find out whether Rose has been handpecking your dear Arthur, the answer is yes. She laid the law down to him last night. What about? What about? Now, what do they all fight about, Bettina? You. Did you see Arthur afterwards? Yes, he wanted to know where you were. He went off to ask you something. Ask me what? Well, he wanted to talk to you, I guess. He went over to Nathan's wagon. Now, how could he have missed you? Well, I went off with Mr. Hale to find some leeches, and I was back minutes later. Jean, did Arthur look as if he might do something foolish? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. If my wife yelled at me like Rose did at him, I'd do something more than foolish. Help Rose get her wagon ready to travel, will you? Thank you. I'm going to find Arthur.
How'd you sleep last night, Charlie? I've told you before, Duke, don't ever wake me up when I'm snoring. Just roll me over. I did. Well, then quit complaining. Hey, did I talk in my sleep? I seem to remember something. Did you hear anything, Mr. Hale? The only one I wanted to. Did I mention any names? If I ever do, Duke, you'll be doing me a favor, let me know. I'd sure like to remember some of their names. Mr. Chris, you remember what you want to, huh? Well, that's very interesting. I cannot remember names. You remember faces, Charlie? Certainly I remember faces. Just give me a look at one and I'll never forget it. <laughs> you know, I had a dream last night. It was about Mr. Hale and... Mr. Hale. Where could a man hide on a wagon train? To do what? Oh, to act like a schoolboy and worry his wife and family. Beats me. Who'd do a childish thing like that? My son, Arthur. You sure? He hasn't been seen since last night. Well, route him out. If that's all that's troubling you, it's as good as fixed. Just a minute. Thank you. Boys, pass the word up and down the line. We're pulling out right away. And see if you can route out Arthur May, get him back to his wagon. Yes, sir. I'm afraid you won't find him around these parts, sir. No? You saddled up and rode out last night. You sure? I saw him. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, you were with Mrs. May here. Well, that's no excuse. I came right back. Yes, sir. Poor Arthur. Who knows where he could have gone? Well, that's pretty obvious, man. There's only one place he could have gone, Kingsville. Arthur wouldn't go to Kingsville. That town's worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. Nope, don't believe I've ever been at those towns. But this Kingsville, it's a pretty wild place, I hear tell. Yeah, well, I hear tell. You better go on about your business, too. Yes, sir. I think I know men, Mrs. May. If he had a spat with his wife and wanted to get even with his mother, he'd probably head for town to tie one off. Oh, not my son. Well, that's the only place he could have gone without provisions. He wouldn't be the first man to try to escape through a bottle. Well, maybe he just went off to be alone somewhere. He'll be back today. If he isn't, I'll go get him. All right? All right. All right. Better saddle up. When you boss a wagon train, you can't help but be involved with family problems. You know what's eating at Nathan May. You know what's troubling his wife and bugging his kids. And it isn't only the running out of Brother Arthur. Another man's troubles with his wife, well, that's his troubles. The best thing everyone else can do is keep out of the middle. It makes your skin tight to see the miserable, but pity in your eyes doesn't help many. Gossip is only salt in their wounds. No one wanted to admit to, let alone talk about the real problem, the one that would have to be met before much more time runs out. Sleep? Yes. She's not sleeping comfortably, but she's asleep. Jean, don't ever let Ginny's maternal instinct get in your way. After she becomes a mother, you will lose part of her. And you won't like that. But if you're to be happy together, you must accept it. And always remember one thing. Whatever a mother does, right or wrong, she does it because she loves her children more than herself. Bettina, I want you to know I'll always love Ginny. I don't know which way to turn. You can always turn to me, Bettina. Beans cold. He's never going to get that oh. thing started. Charlie, this wood won't burn. It's petrified. Don't tell me how to start a fire. I was starting a fire before either one of you was born. Give me a match, one of you. Yeah, I got one here someplace. There you go. Yeah, great, great, great. Kerosene. Yeah. 
Prepare food properly, you gotta cook it slow. Who said that? Any good cook knows that. You got a fat. <laughs> but you gotta start your fire early. How am I gonna start my fire early with everybody crowding me? Mr. Hale, I've decided I must try and find my son tonight. Well, I'll go in and bring him back tomorrow, Mrs. May. Uh, tomorrow could be too late. I wish you'd drive him to Kingsville tonight. You think you're doing the right thing in making him come back? Let me be the judge of that. All right. I'll have to be back by sunup. You better keep that fire going if we're going to have any breakfast. Keep the fire going, he says. I'm the one who should have gone to town. Bring that boy back. You know that, don't you? Mm-hmm. What kerosene? <laughs> Get your mother, honey. Now, you stay right here. She wants her mother. She's got to have her mother. Mrs. May! Mrs. May! What? You go with my boys. Where's your mother? Now, how do I know? Uh, who needs her now? Jenny's having a baby. Can we help? Well, somebody better. She's going to die if I don't find your mother. <laughs> Jenny's been looking for attention ever since she found out she was the only girl in the family. Do what you can, Mabel. I'll find Bettina. Well, come on, Mabel. My sister probably does need help. I'll get names. You open, Duke? Yeah, we can open. We can open? Who's playing the hand? You or Duke? Leave him alone. Bet him a couple dollars. Two dollars. I call two dollars. Cards, please. No, not those. Cut it out! They can play his own cards. Two. Two? Two you get. Take two myself. You know, I bet Mr. Hale didn't enjoy that trip into town tonight. He didn't have much choice, did he? Well, people think that the wagon master's responsible for everything that happens. Now, the trip into town is possibly just what that boy needed. Mrs. May shouldn't have got into the act. Where is Mrs. May? Who? Well, you ju just said something about her. Where is she? Uh, why? My wife's about to have a baby. She needs her mother. Mr. Hale just drove her into town. Well, we have to get her back. Yeah, I'll go get her. You better stay here. You heard what the man said. His wife's going, well, she needs her mother, that's why. Uh, to tell Mrs. May she's got to get here fast. I'm positive the baby is coming, understand? I understand. And don't you worry about a thing. Old Charlie's had many a race with a stork, and he's never lost one yet. I'll bring her back. Bye-bye, boy. <laughs> Close your eyes, Jenny. Close your eyes. Mother. Go on. Get out of here. Well, can I help? Get! Mother. Oh, please. Mother.
Nice people. I'll never understand men. Well, if men understood women, I guess they wouldn't act the way they do. I wonder in which one of these places Arthur is. Well, a man comes into town to forget his troubles. He usually hits the first saloon at the edge of town and then works his way on down to the other end. Unless, of course, he gets thrown into jail and can't make it. Evening. Evening. You the law here? Well, I ain't after Doug's. Well, uh, you mind if I ask you a question? Shoot. You seen a young fella, stranger, around here, about 5'10", dark hair, probably trying to get into trouble as fast as he can? Well, that's all we got. His name is Arthur May. Uh, we don't get honest names either, Mother. Let's take a look, see if your boy's cooling off inside. Thank you. Say in here. I believe that bartender, he hasn't been here. Wait till I get my hands on that boy. He hasn't already learned his lesson the hard way. Well, come on, we got a lot of ground to cover. Mother, please help me. Mother, where are you? Where is she? Why isn't she here? Jane! Mother! Jane! Please, Mother. Where's her mother? Mother, please Jenny, help Jenny, me. Jenny, Jenny, your, your, mother, your, your mother went to find out. She doesn't know you're in labor, dear. She isn't going to be here to help you. You're going to have to do this without her. No. No. I... Jenny. Jenny. You have to face it. Your mother can't do this for you. I can't. Virginia. I can't. Virginia. I can't. Virginia! You keep crying for your mother and you will die. some fun, right? So have it. You've been sitting in that same spot since you walked in here. If you don't move, you're going to take root in that spot. Come on, honey, make up your mind. Leave it up or go home. After all, honey, I...
Turn it back on him. Well, I guessed wrong. He never made it to this side of town. Well, maybe he didn't come into town at all. Maybe he, he went somewhere else. Well, I had Duke follow his horse tracks far enough to see where he was heading. He came into town, I'm sure of that. Well, let's try that one. fellow off a wagon train by the name of Arthur May. Any chance you've seen him? You his father? Have you seen him? He just left. Gentlemen, you're looking for somebody. Uh, you his father. Father? Me? No, I ain't nobody's father. You're cute. Say so. You want to buy me a drink, honey? Me? Uh -huh. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'll get my flower. Hill. Honestly, I can't say I do. But you're a man. How could you possibly understand what it's like to be a mother? You can't blame me for that. No? And you can't blame me for being the kind of mother I am. Uh, do no good to talk about it. Chris, I've been looking all over town for you. Well, I bet you have. Mrs. May, they want you back at the wagon train. Your daughter's in a bad way. The baby's uh, almost here. Oh, poor Ginny. Please hurry, Mr. Hale. Here! be surprised. I did it without her. the real trouble with my family is me, their mother. Well, aren't you being too... I should let Nathan be the head of the family. He has a right to be. 
Well, you can't just blame yourself for that, Bettina. Arthur is still tied to my apron strings. I've come between him and his wife. And who else is to blame for Ginny being frightened to have her baby without me? Well, you've done no differently than a lot of other mothers. Then they deserve what's happening to me. My children don't need me anymore. I've, I've got to let them live their own lives. And that's not an easy thing to do. No, Eugene. They're pulling out in a couple of minutes. You've made up your mind? I've made up my mind. Preachers say once God couldn't be everywhere, so he made mothers. But I haven't seen many mothers who could do what Bettina May did, of her own free will. She told her family to go on without her, to find their own way and lead their own lives, just as she should lead hers. She told me something I'll never forget. She said, forgive me. I'm like every other mother. But whatever I did, right or wrong, I did because I love them. Yes, it took a lot of courage to go west, but it took a lot more for Bettina May to go east.